The people you let in, in the room with you, are the people who are gonna determine how long you're gonna live, how much you're gonna weigh, how happy you're gonna be. Mm -hmm. And that's a modifiable um, opportunity for all of us. The biggest opportunity, I would argue, is paying very close attention to your immediate social circle. That half a dozen people you spend the most time with and you, um, you regard the most. So we know if your three best friends are obese or overweight, there's a 150% chance that you'll be overweight. Um, alcohol and drug abuse are measurably contagious. Um, junk food eating, measurably contagious. Even unhappiness and loneliness. So I, while I would never tell you to dump your old friends, I would tell you that I would argue that the most important thing you can do if you want to live longer and be healthier and lose weight is right now upgrade your immediate social circle. Mm -hmm. Go out and find three new friends whose idea of recreation is pickleball or biking or golfing or whatever the sport is you like. Um, a f at least one of those friends should be a vegan or vegetarian because they're going to show you how and where to find delicious plant-based food. Uh, if they come over to the, your house, they're going to expect you to make it, so you might even learn how to make it for yourself. And then it's really important to have friends who care about you on a bad day. That seems to be kind of the litmus test of a true friend. Um, and this is again, this is nobody can make money off of you by doing this. But friends tend to be long-term adventures. And there's this very clever researcher named Nicholas Christakis. He's at Yale now, he's at Harvard. Uh, but he's, he's very um, persuasively shown that the people you let in, in the room with you, are the people who are gonna determine how long you're gonna live, how much you're gonna weigh, how happy you're gonna be. Mm -hmm. And that's a modifiable, um, opportunity for all of us and so in this new year's instead of going out and some new set of resolutions of I'm going to diet this time I'm going to exercise which you will fail at if you look at the data by January 20th you know the vast majority of people who start resolutions are no longer on them uh, upgrade your social circle this mm -hmm. time make a new friend and actually can you tell me about this concept of Moai Yes, so Moai is an this. Okinawan concept. Uh, it originally started as kind of a financial arrangement because there weren't banks. So a group of friends pooled money, and if one got short or you know needed money to buy seed or something, uh, they could draw from the pool. Um, but what it's evolved over time is a committed social circle. And you see it especially in, among older Okinawans. And um, they, they'll tend to meet several times a week. Um, a lot of it's gossip and drinking sake, but a lot of it is, uh, A, you know, they're not lonely. Mm -hmm. uh, that's off the table right there, but they're um, supporting each other and, and um, uh, uh, there for their friends in, in tough times. So, so it's kind of a psychological uh, security net, but it's also, you know, financial security mm -hmm. net. One of the best examples, there was, I kind of hung out with uh, uh, a Moai, five ladies who were 102. Uh-huh, I love it. And, and the second night, um, they, uh, one of the ladies didn't show up, and the other four put on their kimonos and shuffled across the village to go check on their friend. And, um, you know, had that friend at 102 fallen, broke a hip, oh. hit a head, it would have been curtains. Yeah. But I, you could just very clearly see this social construct is replacing, um, you know, a medical team or yeah. long-term care. I mean, um, it, and it didn't cost the government anything. It didn't cost the employer anything. It didn't have to pay a premium. It was just this sort of beautiful custom yeah. that provided uh, dividends daily and feeling good, but you know, real dividends in times of need. Yeah, it's like purpose. There's your purpose, right? My friends need me, so yeah. I've got to be around for them. 
Um, that's really wonderful. And I think um, you were able to implement this concept, right, in one of the cities that you worked with? Of We did it in get, all cities. I mean, I love this. In fact, I, I was... Um, so we did it in... Uh, this was probably eight years ago in the beach cities of Los Angeles. They're called the Beach Walkers. There mm -hmm. are 13 of them that came together, and they would... They got to the point where they were celebrating Easter together, and when somebody got sick, the other 12 were at the hospital. I was just in, in um, so the beach, is, is Hermosa, Manhattan, and Redondo Beach, one of our big Blue Zone projects. Since we started working there, they've seen their, the BMI of that city drop by 20%. Wow. Stunning. This is measured by Gallup. And those, those beach and the Moai, these Moais that we deploy, is just one facet, but that those beach walkers are still together. I love it. They came up to me. And so this is, you know, it's very rare to see a diet last more than seven months. And here, almost 10 years later, this, uh, the, the beach walker Moai is still supporting yes. each other. They're still getting out th two or three times a week and walking. Um, they're, That's awesome. Yeah. So they're buddies. And would they have been friends otherwise? No. They were strangers, right, no. before this happened? So we, see, we don't rely on, on ga technology or gadgets to put people together. Um, we don't believe it works as well. What we do is we get them all together in an auditorium. We have a process where we help match people based on shared values shared interest and shared schedule. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to have all three of those lined up. Then you have the deck stacked in favor of a real relationship, mm -hmm. real friendship. And then we challenge them for 10 weeks to either walk or eat Blue Zones food. So we're organizing a social circle around a healthy behavior. Mm -hmm. And you find there's a tipping point after about five or six weeks when you kind of put the training wheels on and help people connect that they they become friends. You don't need they don't need you anymore. They, it's like we're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're friends now. Let's uh, you know let's get together and have another um, dinner party at my house. You yeah, know, I'll bring the yeah. beans. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring the beans. <laughs> I'm sake. Um, oh no, I I absolutely love that, and especially as we have aging populations and um, community so important and. You know, you raise an interesting point about technology, and I was wondering what your thoughts are on digital communities and even these robots that they have that can now be companions for people. Like, this is where it's going, kind of whether we like it or not. So what do you think about all of that, especially in light of these in-person, visual, new friends communities? live well you know i've been in this um space for 20 years and you know when i first ended it uh pedometers were the great pedometers <laughs> were going to make everybody walk more and the work face pedometer thing no, nobody wears a pedometer anymore. then there's fitbit fitbit's gone um i haven't seen anything that's made a long-term impact um now, today I just saw an AI tool which gets you talking and um, through the course of the way it sort of leads you down a path, it can identify if you're a suicide risk. Mm -hmm. So maybe something like that is really... Um, I, don't, I don't believe we're anywhere near replacing another human being. I mean, we're sitting next to each other. I, I, I feel your presence. I feel your warmth. I can tell you're listening to me. I can tell you're metabolizing. I'm, I know certain things I'm saying uh, create an emotional response. You think of your parents and so forth. Um, that if, if I fall down and you're going to help me up right now, that, that's irreplaceable. Yeah. Um, I believe. And, you know, why, you know, why, why, why to try to replace something that's not broken? You know, I, I, I would... I would be thinking about how, how to bring people back together in meaningful ways rather than trying to replace them with some, you know, artificial intelligent driven app for our phone. I but you can make more money on an AI app than you can bringing people together. So that's why, that's why we're going that direction. Yeah. 
I think too, some people might be so kind of afraid that it might be easier maybe to talk to an AI rather than try to forge a relationship with another human. Although I, I do wonder if there's ways in which you can maybe learn to practice with the AI and then go ahead and maybe that gives you the confidence to be able to go out there and, and meet people. Because one question that, that we did have that we were thinking about is like, what if you have none of this, right? What if you, what if you have no community? Um, what if you live in a food desert and you're really depressed? You know, what do you, what do you do? How do you, how do you create that atmosphere where somebody's going to invite you to happy hour? Well, the answer is probably not a robot. I don't think, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, and the answer is not sitting on the couch and shooting up with Ozempic either.